Hey, Sports Choir back here with Coach Kaye once again from Georgia Tech Volleyball. You split this past weekend at North Carolina State in North Carolina. We'll go back to the NC State match. The team was down two to none, yeah. and you going into the locker room and what strategies or did you what did you do just to get that momentum to go for those final three sets or three yeah to win the match? Uh, you know, I think one of the biggest things we talked about was trusting that what got us in that position is what's going to take us to where we want to go. Uh, so we had to go back to playing with some passion, you know, having some fun out there, trying to do the things that that we know how to do well with our serving and our passing. Uh, and get our middle attack involved. And so I think we, we came out of game three, we put in a, a different lineup. We went to a 6-2, uh, we put Gabby on the right, uh, we put Ashley on the left, and then we were able to just be a little more diverse. I think everybody really stepped up and was able to contribute. Um, and you know, we have talked about that several times this season is you win as a team, you lose as a team. We gotta do whatever it takes in that third game to to make it go longer, and, and we did just that. We came out, we put a little more loose, we were a little too tense in the first two games, and we were able to be efficient with the changes that we made. You used 11 different players in the yeah. match. <laughs> and just talk about the depth of the team and having For that sure. flexibility to use those main players and change your formation in yeah. the middle of a match like that. Right, and I, and I think that that's what's gonna differentiate teams down the road. You know, it's, it's every team is gonna struggle at some point, and we're gonna have to find solutions. Um, and our players step up and, and they did that. They helped us find those solutions and they came in and they were efficient um, and that's why we won. Yeah, a lot of contributions as far as uh, Cody Comby, uh, Lauren Pitts, nine kills and six blocks. Yeah. Just talk about that depth, those two players sure. and, and blocking as well. You had a lot of blocks in mm -hmm. the match. Yeah. And you see your middles and even some outsides look like they really performed well in that regard. Right. Yeah, I mean, it was something that we focused on, and, and we had a strategy going in, and, um, uh, you know, the first two games, to just in the system a lot, and we weren't executing on the things that we talked about, and so we were able to just refocus, and I think once we, we added a little more pressure with our serve, they became a little more predictable, and we were able to execute with our block a little bit better, so that was good. Good. And I talked to, to London Ackerman earlier. She talked about that having fun aspect. Yeah. I, how do you balance that? You, you're with a very competitive group on and off the, right. the court that comes <laughs> with being a Georgia Tech player. For sure. How do you help them do that just in a match to remember it's a, it's a match, but, but balance that with enjoying yeah, the game I mean, itself? I think that the, this game means so much to all of us. And I think that everybody has been playing for a long time and there was a reason why they started playing, there was a reason why I wanted to coach, there was a reason why they decided to play in college and that wasn't just because they could get a scholarship, it's because they love what they do and so we need to find a way to even when we're having those pressures to enjoy that pressure and enjoy those situations because they are part of this great game that you enjoy doing and so we can't lose sight of that. It's, it's, it's a passion that we have about this sport and that's the way we have to play with it. You had a reversal of fortune against North Carolina later that weekend. Yeah. You're up to Sestin and then uh, dropped the final three. Yeah. What can you take from that match as you prepare for this home stretch here of ACC play? Um, I mean, I think what Carolina was able to do to us was very similar to what we were able to do to NC State the night before. Uh, and, you know, they made some great adjustments. They are very deep on, on their bench, and they were able to find really some players that came in and stepped up and did, and did some things that we couldn't just, we just didn't respond to. Um, so I think we have to respond better in those situations. I mean, I think that we have to, we should have been a little better prepared mentally for them to be able to find solutions and come back because of the team that, that, that they are. You know, we knew that they were going to, that we knew that it wasn't going to be a quick match and they weren't, they weren't just going to hand that match to us. Um, and I think I think once they started responding, we kind of lost control a little bit and mentally just didn't execute the way that we needed to execute. So we lost our confidence and we let them kind of push us back and we didn't really respond the way we should have responded in order to uh, finish a team like North Carolina. Um, so hopefully we're learning from that. We're going to play some really good teams now in the future and, uh, you know, we're going to be in that situation again, and hopefully we're closing it out better than what we did. Yeah, you have two competitive teams coming in here this weekend with Sarah Notre Dame and Louisville. 
it's senior weekend. I know the, I guess the last match is Notre Dame one on Saturday, but Louisville obviously is Friday, so it's really an encompassing three days. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with those emotions as far as and it'd be fine home matches? You have a right. large senior group, so that's yeah. another factor as well. How do you balance all of that, taking care of all the friends and family and from coming in from out of yeah. town with playing two competitive right. matches? Um, I think we, we, I mean, it's just understanding timing. I mean, we want time with our family. Of course, we want them to be a part of the special moment for the girls and for our team. And so, um, you know, they're going to be involved, and, but we also know that we have business to take care of. And so we're going to be doing what we need to do to get prepared and, and we'll have some downtime to spend with family and we'll include them in some of our meals and and things like that so that we can kind of do both of those things together a little bit, spend time with the team and at the same time have the family come by. Uh, but I know that all the family want us to win, so that I know that they understand that we have responsibilities and we got to stay focused um, on these two teams that are coming up. But um, I think that our players and just, just our program, we've been pretty good about balancing that. I think that it's family is an important thing. They're an important part of all that we do. Uh, and so it's good to be around them. It gives you extra energy. It gives you an, an extra motivation to go out there and play hard for them. And so it would be great to have the opportunity to spend some time with, with their families here. You incorporated a large senior class when you first came here, which is unique. And how did they help you? you first of all, how did they help you when you first came in? Mm -hmm. And how have they been a part of your vision of building this program from a team that struggled to now you've reached a 20, get to the 20 win right. match mark and looks like potential NCAA tournament team. Just right. to discuss how they've helped you with this development the past three years. Um, they've been wonderful. They, they helped me more than they will probably ever know. Um, but they, you, you know, I couldn't ask for, for a better group. I've been so lucky to have them here when they hired me. Uh, those kids have bought in and respected and, and just jumped on board with everything that our staff has laid out and they said we're with you and, and we said we're with you and we're going to do this together and I think that we have, I think that they have made us better and we have pushed them and made them better and it's been a wonderful relationship. I think that the senior class, um, their work ethic, it's, it's just so crazy, you know, it's just the, they work hard, they're very, you can hold them accountable to what they say they're going to do, they work hard off the, off the court, they work hard in the court, um, they have done and believed in everything that we have worked together with them to accomplish, um, you know, and, and we have evolved as coaches and they have grown as players and uh, we're at a very good point and I think a very deserving point of our careers um, because of all the work that they put in. And they, they're they leaving and going, hopefully for not a long time, you yeah. have hopefully some more matches <laughs> to play, of course, for sure. but you also bring in a new crop every year yeah. and you signed four players. And as I said, we'll get to specifics in the future with what each of them contributes. Right. But you're in the middle of your, your fall season right now, yet you had your fall signing. Yeah. How do you balance that just as a staff as far as do you go to go into matches or do you save that more for the summer? Do you have them come in? Like, how, how have you found that balance just during the past few months of dealing with all this? Uh, I, you know, they've had been committed for, for about a year and a half now. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, so we have been watching them and in touch with them for a long time. Usually we watch them a lot in the club season. Uh, so we have had two years to watch them a lot. They have been on campus a bunch of times. A lot of those kids are local, uh, so we see them at our matches. Uh, you know, and then uh, Randy is our recruiting coordinator, and I think once it gets time to close to those dates, then that's her focus is to, you know, get everything ready, get all the documents that we need, and, and get all that stuff kind of ready to roll. Um, but I think that it, it, it kind of helps us out a little bit that we have them committed early, um, and we already know pretty much who we're getting. There, there might be, you know, one or two late signees, but um, this class, um, you know, we, we have had them for a while, and so we had everything ready to go when it was time for them to sign, and so it was pretty smooth. So you've had them since they were high school, like sophomores. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right now, you're, are you, you're you looking at high school freshmen and sophomores? Is that kind of how it goes with the... Yes, unfortunately. That's how, just how fast it's going. Um, you know, we signed our 17 class. We had verbally committed our 18 class. We got a couple kids verbally committed in 19. Um, mm -hmm. 
and we're now into our finishing out our 19 class and going into our 2020 class. Yeah. So it's um, it's pretty early in volleyball. It's just how how the recruiting it started to grow and um, you know if you trying to fight for top talent in the country. Um, that's the race you're running right now. How do you just evaluate that as well? And so that's more projection. I, yeah. Obviously, it's projection from a high school senior to college. Right. But you have to look at a freshman and see what they can do four or five years from now. Has that has that changed since your first time or sure. earlier in yeah, your coaching it's, career? It's, yeah, it's um, it's definitely riskier now. I think for the player and for the school because you don't have too many opportunities to um, get to know one another and kind of develop a, a deeper relationship. Um, but so we're really looking at attitude and we're looking, we're talking to coaches and we're trying to find out if the, the, their attitude and their culture is gonna fit, fit our program because we understand that. We can make them better volleyball players, but there are some things that are really hard to develop um, in players. And so we try to hit those things off and make sure that they're a good fit that way. Um, and then we look at their physical and, and just, you know, kind of physical and volleyball potential and say, hey, a couple of years from now, this is where we project they're going to be playing at and, and what they're going to be touching or things like that. And, uh, and then we make our move. Do you even, and this is my last thing, do you even look at the, you mentioned all that stuff, even the academics, because oh, yeah. a lot of them have not even taken ACTs or SATs, right. wherever they're, they're from yet. Yeah. The, and, how do you incorporate that part of it? And do you kind of help them, guide them as far as these are classes that you may want to take your senior yes. year and junior year? Yeah, how do you sure. work with that? Uh, we have to stay on top of that. So we, we stay in constant communication with them, uh, making sure that they're going, they're doing things on track. But if, if usually um, Georgia Tech attracts very high academic players, um, you know, so that's usually something that we don't have to worry about too much because these kids are very self-driven within their academics. and. Uh, you know, I think that what the senior class has done here and being able to bring our program back to the, the national spotlight is we're, we're you know, now um, in touch with a, a very high caliber players. And so uh, we're one of the very few places that I think you can have the best of both worlds. And uh, it's, it's a special place here at Tech and people are starting to see that.